Hi guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. It's good to see you again. As you might recall, if you already watched last time, we talked about dropout protection in detail and what that means in Studio One when it comes to ensuring really low latency in recording, no matter how big your projects are. Well, this time we're gonna take it just a little bit further in making sure that everything that you record is exactly what you hear when you play it back again. Because whether it's something really obvious where you're playing and it just takes way too long until you hear the result, or whether it's something very subtle, it can be annoying and very frustrating to fix if you don't know how. By the way, the knowledge that I'm sharing with you today, you can apply to any other software out there. So let me walk you through the process and I guarantee that you're gonna have a much better time recording. So this is a project you also find in the video description for download. And it's just a simple sine wave that I'm feeding through a free output on my audio interface and feeding back into the input of an empty audio track, okay? So this is called a loopback and you can see me do it on that other screen right now. And it's very easy to hook up and it's very effective because you can use this to very quickly see if there's a mismatch between what you're recording and what you're playing back, right? Let's go. So we record it. And now if we zoom in a little bit, you can see, okay, that is clearly too early. So that is what the offset would have to correct for us. How do we do this? Well, you might have noticed that I set the uh, time base of the transport bar to samples because we need to enter the offset value for audio and samples. And then all I have to do is just hit tab, your tab key to tap to the transient, all right? And then zoom in. Okay, that's indeed perfect. And keep this number in mind. If we can't keep this number in mind, we just right click it and copy text to clipboard, and then you have it ready to go to do your little equation here. Okay, don't worry. Like I said, you only do this once and then you're set for life. And you should do this in any DAW. Regardless whether you're using Studio One or not, you should always do this test. So even if you're not using Studio One yet, I still think this is highly beneficial for you. Okay, so now we do the same thing. We tap to the sine wave and we see that's a higher value. Okay, that's 200. And as we can recall, it was 25 here, right? So all we have to do now is deduct this from that. So that's 200 minus 125, obviously 75. So we go into our preferences, we go into the audio tab, we enter 75 samples as our record offset. Just gonna do this recording again. Aha, uh -huh. and that's actually perfect. So if we compare how it was before, and now that's clearly way better, right? And now that's set, I never have to worry about it again. All right, now I have one more for all the media guys out there. Let's just take this a little step further. As you can see, I have my Mai Tai here. And it's really just the init patch, like completely from scratch with a square wave. And it sounds very interesting, of course. So what I've done here is basically route the Mai Tai into the signal output of this loopback. Why did I do this? Well, I press something on my key, it travels out of the interface and then back into the interface and gets recorded on both tracks at the same time. That way I can make sure that everything that I play with my MIDI keyboard is also in perfect sync. Huh, that's pretty cool, right? There's just one little thing that we have to do before we hit record now, and that is to set the time base, which is currently in samples, into seconds. And the reason that we do this is because in the preferences, the MIDI offset has to be reported in milliseconds, okay? That's just gonna make the deduction a little bit easier for us. So now I just hit record and watch what happens. Cool, right? So basically I just recorded the MIDI and I'm seeing the resulting audio simultaneously at the same time uh, in the vertical. Now I can compare the two to make sure that they're exactly aligning. And after I've done that, I'm always certain that everything that I record is exactly what I hear when I play it back again. So how do we proceed? It's exactly the same procedure as before. We just tap to the MIDI node instead of the transient. And we keep this number in mind, 3.777. I can remember that. 
and this is 783. So that's a difference of 6, isn't it? Yeah. So let me just enter a MIDI offset of 6 milliseconds. And then we're going to hit record again. And see if that's any better. Yeah. As you can see, perfect. So now that we've done this, we can safely disable the input quantize, just play along, you know, unquantize with a little bit of human feel and give our music a little bit of swing. Like I said in the beginning, this trick is not something specific to Studio One. You can use this in your Ableton setup, in your Cubase setup, whenever you have issues with the driver error compensation, as it's called, just apply this trick and I guarantee you're going to have a perfect experience. So thank you so much for joining me today and can't wait to see you next time.